So I said, come on, fly. You gotta come with me. All right. And we're gonna do the most awesome things in the world. Let's do it. And we're gonna go. And we're gonna play poker. All right. Who's doing? With a stinger. <laughs> can you guys can you guys move away from this fire right here so I can have a little bit of light? That'll work. And then I walked out to the pineapple store for some watermelon. <laughs> I'm good. And the watermelon was so sweet. Oh, I couldn't take it. My teeth. Oh, they just hurt so bad. Cause my teeth are sensitive. To the sweet. Sweet. And them was so sweet. I needed some salt. And I put some of that chili powder on my watermelon. And it tastes so good. And I love it so much. I had to share it with my fly. And then as I was walking by the farm, I saw a llama. It's kind of cold. And I said, hello, Mr. Llama. And he said, hello. <laughs> it's like kind of when you get in Well, Mr. Llama had a friend. Mr. Snake. His name was Mr. Snake. <laughs> Mr. Snake was uh, in a bad spot, living in a hole in the ground where it's hot, in a desert. Ooh, I would that's the noise right there, man. Not my place. <laughs> but I've learned you should never judge people by the holes that they live in or where they're at. You go to San Francisco, there's a guy who lives in a bush. <laughs> That's me. His name is the Bushman. <laughs> Don't interrupt. Well, Mr. Snake had a friend and his name was Mr. Flytrap. Unfortunately, my fly died. <laughs> so what'd you do to fly trap? Well, I told Mr. Fly Trap. Right. Say hello to my foot. <laughs> and then I took my pig sticker. And I cut him open. Where'd you find? I you found my what? fly. <laughs> <laughs> so after I was done putting my fly back together and stitching him back up, Thank you. I tried to resuscitate him back to life. How'd that work? Well, I'm sleezus. What do you think? <laughs> so he was brought back to life, a little Frankensteinish. But it was okay. Uh, he didn't make it into the dining. Sometimes I still do. Then that night, we had habanero for dinero. Yes, moving on. Now. I said, hello, Mr. Llama. I would like to speak with you. Which I was already doing. So I was speaking to him, and as I said, and as I looked very deeply into his eyes, I said, you have wonderful eyes. See, the funny thing is, are you going to get that last prop? You do too. Why, thank you. So then I shared my bowl of cherries with Mr. Llama. Where'd you get the cherries? I had them to begin with, now shut up. <laughs> <laughs> then I let him out of the farm. <laughs> and we walked down the street. <laughs> Where'd you find out the street? I found Mr. Pig. <laughs> Mr. Pig was awesome. <laughs> I said, hello, Mr. Pig. I really like you and I like your species. What kind of person are you? He said, well, I'm kind of a ham and I really like pitches. I said, that's wonderful. How do you feel about bacon? I don't. <laughs> I said, well, that's funny, because I love it. He's like, that's terrible. I hate you, and I never want to see you again. Well, I said, I'm sorry, but you're going to see me in just a few minutes. How? On the grill. I'm going to cook you. <laughs> so I cooked Mr. Pig, and I had my bacon. Because bacon is epically amazing and awesome. Never had it. Anybody who disagrees is going to be bacon. <laughs> I'm turning into bacon. I like bacon. So good. Bacon's one.
Yes. Now, Mr. Pig had a friend who was very deeply torn by my Baconator. Sounds good. It was Mr. Bird. I was just going to say, that was Mr. Bird. Hey, what's up? And so Mr. Bird said, hello, how are you? I said, hello, Mr. Bird, how are you? He said, fine, but my beak hurts. I said, why does your beak hurt? Because I was trying to call you Church. You look like a pastor. I can't get it out. So you picked his name? No. So I took my switchblade and I cleared it out for him. So you did. Would you let me do my story? Yes. I don't care. So, as I walk down the street with Mr. Pig and Mr. Bird, oh no, I ate Mr. Pig, sorry. With Mr. Llama. That's right, Mr. Pig was in my stomach, so I guess technically I walked with Mr. Pig. I know that. So, as I walked with all of them, we passed the gutter. What was in the gutter? Gutter girl. <laughs> How was she doing? Well, I saw a hand sticking out of this gutter, and I'm thinking, oh no, there's someone, a person. Stick, stuck, stick, stuck in the gutter. And so I said, hey, are you in there on purpose, or did you fall? She said, this is my fault. <laughs> I said, well, it's a lovely home if I do say so myself, although I myself would never live in a place such as this. She said, oh, that's okay, that's fine, that's perfectly okay. I would never expect you to live in a place like this because you're not a gutter bean. Very too true. I am not a gutter bean, and I shall never choose to be a gutter bean. So we went on a merry way, leaving gutter girl to her fate of dealing with the rodents. So, halfway down the way, Llama, Mr. Llama, I'm sorry, beg your pardon, Mr. Llama. It's okay. I'm very sorry. It's fine. Thank you. He's got a cramp in his knee, and I said, Mr. Llama, you need to sit down. You all right? And he's totally fine. It's <laughs> good. Until I stepped on his foot accidentally. <laughs> but it was okay. I stepped on his foot because he said it was okay. I said, I'm so sorry. He said it's okay. Like a true friend. I love of course. You. I love, love you. you. I love you too. I love, I love you too. Love you. I'm too busy sharing my love. <laughs> <laughs> now how does it feel, Joel? It hurts. Then one day, it does, doesn't it? after they had been living in my residence for several years. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Yes, it's quite astonishing, I know. How could you put up with a llama for that long? I'll tell you, it wasn't easy. Whoa. No, that's a camel. You need to get your animal straight. That's where Mr. Camel came in. He came for a visit. So Mr. Camel came in for a visit to, mi to visit his cousin, Mr. Llama. Mr. Camel's name was, of course, Mr. Camel. Not Joe. Why not? Because Joe Camel is already taken. <laughs> I knew. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. <laughs> so on this particular day, it was very hot outside. And me sitting there under the tree with my bald head. Eating cherries. I gave one to Mr. Camel. He said, no, it's okay. My turds are about the same size, and I eat those instead. <laughs> Which is very gross, and I've actually seen it done. Did you know they have Australian camels? That makes sense. Yes. I found out when I went there. <laughs> I went there summer of eighth grade year, which you weren't even alive. Because I didn't bring you into existence. <laughs> because I didn't feel like it. Be quiet. <laughs> So then one day, oh. riding along with Mr. Camel and Mr. Llama, I decided I was going to take a look around the bush and see what was there. I saw Mr. Possum. And Mr. Possum was very amazingly awesome. You see me stumbling? But I thought he was dead. Really? So I said, Mr. Possum, you cannot be dead. Please wake up. And so he did. <laughs> and so I said, oh, wonderful, Mr. Possum, why do you feel the need to act like a dead person or dead opossum? I am very sorry. Whenever anyone comes around, he said, I don't like people. I said, well, that's a wonderful excuse, and I can completely relate. People in general are very stupid, ignorant beings who can't drive, can't think, and don't know what the hell they're doing, and don't know what they were put on this earth for. So I completely understand what you're talking about. Get an umbrella! <laughs> Mr. Fly, I can.
kept in my very, very secret, very special, very amazing, very ninja pocket. <laughs> How big was the is pocket? He dead? No! <laughs> he was Frankenstein back to life. Now let me finish my story. <laughs> How big was the pocket? It was about the size of your head. <laughs> oh, that was so. That's well, possible. he was enjoying his wonderful, That's beautiful, bad. amazing stay in the pocket of awesomeness and ninja tasticness. I said, Mr. Possum, I'd like you to meet Mr. Fly, Mr. Camel, and Mr. Llama. And he said, Wonderful. Hi. Nice to meet you all. And so we had a very good time from now on. I said, let me finish. And Mr. Pig was too busy being in my stomach, so he couldn't say hi, but he mumbled. <laughs> <laughs> he did mumble yep. enough to where he could be heard. And I said, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what other Mr. Kangaroo? Hey, where are you in? go? Well, we didn't meet Mr. Kangaroo for another few miles. But then when we did meet Mr. Kangaroo, Mr. Kangaroo decided to greet me with a kick to the face. <laughs> it was not very, very uh, uh, enjoyable, if I do say so myself. Um, as a matter of fact, it hurt. Like, uh... Getting kicked to the face. Like, like yeah, being kicked to the face. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Mr. Ke uh, Mr. Kangaroo said, I am very sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I thought you were an Aboriginal hunter. Because they used to eat us. Well, unfortunately, I'm not an Aboriginal hunter, and I I completely accept your apology on kicking me in the face. It was totally unreliably an accident. Then what are you? I am Sleesis. <laughs> so is Mr. Kangaroo gonna pop your pocket, with Mr. Fly? Well, unfortunately, my pocket that I had, Mr. Fly, was not the interdimensional matter transporting pocket that I had in my other pair of pants. <laughs> And why didn't you wear those pair of pants? Because I wasn't expecting to be jumping into other dimensions using my pocket. <laughs> so then, as we kept walking, and yes, we were walking, we didn't have anything else, and my shoes had burned out by this time. That's what you get for buying Walmart brand. <laughs> 20 bucks at Walmart, lasted me three days in the desert, but they still made pretty good drinking glasses, so it was okay. <laughs> what did you do, cut open Mr. Camel? No. <laughs> Why? Camel's scary. <laughs> I don't care. I found an oasis. In the desert. An oasis, a spit of land in the desert that is quite wonderful. With palm trees and beautiful water and, and a genie lamp and, and voluptuous, amazing people who are there to care and cater to your every need. Did you rub the, did you so, rub the genie lamp? How, how I rubbed the genie lamp and out came oh, Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I said, go back in that lamp. I don't want you, you dumb, stupid, amazing, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to finish that. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? She said, okay. <laughs> and then I took that genie lamp and I stuck it where the in sun a box. <laughs> Box. A box. Which, bo which box was it? No, no. What kind of box? What kind of box? It was a cardboard box that I had gotten from a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with this uh, so-called box? Hobo, well, this box I happened to keep in that pocket along with Mr. Fly. And Mr. Fly was using it as storage, so I had to have him move all of his crap out. <laughs> so he did. What did you do with the hobo? hobo? Mr. Hobo was a friend from my childhood that you will never meet, never know, and I will not tell the story about him, so be quiet. <laughs> so, I get this box and I stick him in it. And then I forget about him. So we continue along in the desert, past another oasis, not stopping because it's too long of a drive. I mean a walk. No, we were driving by this time. Where's the car? I was driving my sandmobile. <laughs> awesome. So in my sandmobile, I had everything. I had the deluxe luxury amazing model of ninjas. Careful. Careful, careful. We don't want you to get burned. It was more than ninjatastic. Leave it alone. What about your puppy? My puppy I left at home, which I had to get.